for this little lesson tonight and uh, sorry it's been a little bit of time I've been doing some study and, and deep diving into some other things which I'll be making a video hopefully in the next couple of days about so I just wanted to come on here real quick and talk about the world at large um, my lights flickering so bear with me <laughs> so number one Australia uh, Singapore, uh, some other countries, uh, Canada, now Washington State, uh, Seattle to be specific, and other places are in fact coming out saying that you cannot go into a store to buy or sell unless you have the current inoculation against nothingness. Um, if you don't, then you don't get to go in and do these things. Okay, so again, I bring our attention back to a video I had made a while back about the mark of the beast. And, you know, I don't say it lightly. I have never said it lightly. I did a lot of study, a lot of uh, introspection and inspection on what this means and what the words meant, you know, what uh, karagma or charax, what the, the word buy and sell, what that meant in the original language, in the Greek language, uh, what hand, forehead stood for and meant. And so I did not just willy-nilly this and come to this conclusion freelance out of nowhereville. It was through a lot of prayer, a lot of study, a lot of reflection that, and just listening for the Holy Spirit's prompting on my heart. And I am a thousand percent convicted that in fact that is what we're looking at with these okay it is worldwide it is from one corner of this flat earth to the other corner where the winds are held all right it is ongoing and it's ramping up to where it's becoming even more you know and, and I'm just I'm reiterating I think a lot of what I said before because time is short you know have you heard the news Jesus is coming and he's coming soon. And like I said many times over, if he told me that almost 26 years ago now, that he was coming back sooner and quicker than people chose or wanted to believe, how much sooner and quicker is it today, 26 years later, with a rollout of what we're seeing, okay? It's, it's time to get off the fence. It's time to make that decision and firmly lock your feet in place whose you are and where you're walking. It's time to love not our lives unto the death. It's time to profess the words of Jesus Christ, unashamed and unafraid. It's time to shine bright in a dark world, to not be afraid, to not be swayed to the left hand nor to the right. There's a reason that the Lord makes a point of saying this to us. I mean, look at the divide in the United States alone right now. You've got the political left and the political right. Jesus said, don't go to the left or to the right. No, no, no. We're to stay in the narrow path that leads to eternity, that leads to Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our eternal salvation through him, okay? And, and we're told that it's by the blood of the lamb, which is our faith in Jesus Christ alone, by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony, share your testimonies, and they love not their lives unto the death. You can't love your job more than Jesus Christ. You can't love your family more than Jesus Christ. You can't love the curriculum for your children's future in schools more than Jesus Christ. Do you see, the decision to be made is here and now. It is time. We've got to make a decision and stand firm in that decision. There are volcanoes going off around the world right now at the same time. We're talking over 20 at the same time. You don't see that on mainstream news now, do you? No, because they're trying to keep people asleep in this lulled, pacified state of mind. Is it the fluoride in the water? I don't know, very well could be. Is it all the other injections that they've given us over our lifetimes when we didn't know better? It could be. Is it the stuff that they're sprinkling on our food or on us when we go outside that are the size of nanoparticles? I don't know, probably so. There's a lot against us right now in the world. There's a lot that Satan and his minions have made, right? That they've created and designed intentionally 
to deceive, intentionally to delude, intentionally to numb. And so I'm saying, wake up, O oh sleepers, wake up. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Do you guys understand what that means? That's eternal, you know, it's eternal consequences for decisions we make here and now. You know, I, I hear the word a lot thrown around that uh, a precursor, okay, with this mark of the beast. And what I want to say is I think that that is a conspiracy, uh, like a, a, I don't know what the word is, maybe a, a CIA coined phrase. I really do. I think that somebody in the CIA came up with that and went to like, you know, Mr. Jeffers or some of these other really big name people and were like, yeah, call it a precursor. Call it a precursor. You know, that's, yeah, because it's going to look like that, but let's just tell people it's precursor. What I want to say is every single, every single religious organization in the entire world. We're talking Muslim, we're talking Buddhist, we're talking Taoist, Scientologist, Jehovah's Witnesses, Evangelical Jellyfish, right? We're talking the full gamut of people are on board and have made a little subsection in their notes that they're all for this injection. Woo, yeah, go kill people, right? That's what they want. They want you to be deceived. And those who are doing it unknowingly, doesn't matter. They're leading people straight to the pits of hell. Where are the men and women who are bold enough to stand up, who have studied to show themselves approved, to say, do not do this. This is a salvation issue, you guys. And maybe I'm one in like, I don't know, 10, who may actually sit here and say it. And maybe... I'll be looked at like I'm crazy and insane and, and ridiculous for coming out and claiming it. But like I said, I've seen enough, done enough research. I've studied this enough. I've prayed about this enough. This is the biblical mark of the beast. That's what we are seeing with our own two eyes, with our own ears. We're hearing the stories about this. They didn't let people off of an island that was exploding from a volcano last year. If you guys remember right, they, or earlier this year, they wouldn't let them off the island. Why? Because they hadn't had an injection. Okay, so we care about you so much, right? This is my take, and tonight's just a rant, so just, you know, shut me off if you don't like it. That's okay. My feeling won't get hurt. Um, but what I want to say is, like, they care about people so much, so much that they want them to have this injection, so much that if they don't take it, they'll just let the volcano destroy them. There is no logic in that, no rhyme or reason, okay? Any company, any company out there, if they were to tell their employees, every single one of you must go and take acetaminophen right now. Every one of you, go get in line, take your acetaminophen. They would have lawsuits out the wazoo. They don't know who's allergic to that. They don't know who's going to have a reaction to that. They don't know who's going to die because of taking that, right? And yet it's somehow okay for them to come out and claim that they're going to mandate and force this experimental injection that is still not FDA approved into every person's body. Are you serious? I mean, and I'm not trying to be like somebody else on the tube. I'm just asking the question for real. Can we just get real? Can we, can we just be frank about all of this right now? Look, earthquakes across the, the world at this very moment in time, everywhere, all right? Uh, poverty, famine, starvation, pestilence, plagues. Do you guys understand what we're looking at and what season we're in? Jesus Christ told us that you will know the season you're in. If you've got eyes to see and ears to hear, brothers and sisters, you know what season we're in. He said, let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you. I'm not saying Jesus Christ has come back yet because he hasn't. I'm not saying that I know exactly where he is and, and we should go out to the desert. I'm not gonna say that because every eye will see and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess on that glorious and terrible day when he returns. What I'm saying is it's time to wake up. It's time to snap out of it. If you've got your kids in the public fool system, like David Carrico says, in the public school system, okay, get them out. That, that day is here, now, not tomorrow, not, well, it might have to be tomorrow, depending on what time it is where you're at. Get your kids out. 
teach your children. Train up a child in the way that they should go. He doesn't say have 50,000 other teachers train up your child in the ways that they should go. He tells you, parent, train up your child in the ways that they should go. So when they're older, they will not depart from it. Do your job. You know, guard your family. This is your gift from God. It's a gift. Guard it. Protect it with everything you have. If it means that you guys are sleeping in a tent, so be it. Our God is faithful. He'll provide. He's going to take care of those who are his. Be obedient to him. Seek him diligently. Make him number one. Make him your priority. And let your kids see that he's your priority. Stop playing with their salvation and with your own salvation. Now's the time. You know, we want to stand up and we want to be counted, right? Well, let's be counted worthy to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Stop caring about what everybody else thinks about you out there. Stop caring about whether your boss is going to let you go or not. Stop caring about whether your child's going to be able to play in the big game or not. Who cares? Like, I'm so, I live behind a football field. Okay, I am so fed up with all of these parents and children and, and parents, more parents and teachers and coaches that we hear screaming at the kids. I'm so fed up that they're spending all of this beautiful, precious time, you know, I guess deliberating and, and being upset and worried and, and, and encouraging towards a sport and if their kid's going to make it to that, that final playoff game and, and if they're going to be recruited by a, a college, you know, indoctrination camp, like they're so concerned about all this fluff that they're seeing nothing. It's like they're walking around in a fog as though everything's continuing as it always has, right? That's what the Lord warns us about. He says, in those last days, that men will be lovers of themselves. They're going to love that which is wicked. You know, there was, there was a woman who was raped on a train in front of people in New York City. It, it brings tears to my eyes. It's as the days of Lot, right? As the days of Lot. They were trying to take angels. They were trying to force copulation with angels in the days of Lot. And today we hear of a woman in the midst of other people who has this happened to her and nobody stood up, not, not one, not one person stood up to do that which was right, not one. You tell me what hour we're in. You tell me what season we're in, all you who are asleep. Wake up, sleepers. It is what you think it is. If every church out there right now is endorsing this thing, if every 501c3 satanic cult out there is advising its members and congregants to, yeah, go get this thing, you can be darn sure it is not the right thing to do. If 90% of the world is on board, then that's a pretty clear indication, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, it's a pretty clear indication that this, in fact, is the mark, okay? Jeffers, like I said, Hagee, another one. Uh, global ministries, right? Harvest ministries. All of these 501c3 sold out church places are pushing and pimping this injectable juice on their congregants. They're saying that they should absolutely do this, that it's the right thing and the responsible thing. Then you have people like the, the new governor in New York who's out there saying that, oh, well, will you guys be my apostles? Excuse me. You're not Jesus Christ, woman. No way, no how. How dare she? To me, that was blasphemy, okay? Straight up blasphemy. To call these people, to ask them to be her apostles, she just was mocking our Lord and Savior, but they didn't see it. They applauded her at the end of her little speech about getting injected. And, and you know, all I want to say is this. If it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, and there's a pretty good chance it's a duck, and I'm calling it what it is, all right? These places are saying you cannot buy or sell unless you have this. Stop being so focused and caught up in what the world has trained and taught you is the mark of the beast. Don't be so caught up in what the Left Behind series has shown you, deluded you with over all these years. Don't be so caught up in what the 
the the pastor who was taught in a in a cemetery school don't be so caught up in what they say is supposed to be according to all the commentaries the mark of the beast no have eyes to see and ears to hear search out the scripture read it for yourself pray for the holy spirit to reveal all truth to you and study to show yourselves approved the lord will show you don't take my word for it don't take anybody's word for it and oh my gosh don't go out and do this thing without studying, without seeking the Lord diligently. Do you see? The hour we're in is serious. It is, it's beyond serious. I don't even have words to express the churning in my stomach. Do you know how terrible? The, the reason, I just had this conversation today, the reason that the Lord calls it that great and terrible day. Do you guys understand how terrible that day is going to be when we who are sealed, we who are sealed in our foreheads, which is on our minds, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of God Almighty, covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, our Lord. When we walk out that day and we behold our King coming in the clouds and we turn to see all of those who will spend an eternity in the lake of fire burning with brimstone, the gut-wrenching, we may not be feeling it right this moment, but I assure you a day is coming quick when the wrenching in our stomachs is, it's going to be unfathomable, right? We're going to just be hard pressed to even stand aright at the pain that we're going to feel for the lost souls. So do what you can today. Bring as many people to the Lord as you can. Stop caring about what everybody else around you thinks or says. Or if they, they say that you're fanatical or that you're crazy or that you're a Jesus, you know, that you're a Jesus nut or I don't know what they say. What do they say? They say, you know, a Bible thumper or a Jesus freak or I don't know any number of supposedly derogatory things. I want to be known as like the crazy Bible lady in my area. Go ahead. Call me the crazy Bible lady. What an honor. What an honor. You think that highly of me? Really? Do you see the shift in the mindset? We need to be, we need to be fools according to the world so that we are kings and queens according to our Lord. We need to be just sold out, so sold out that nothing by any means will shake us from the walk that is set before us, from the race that we've got to run. And you guys, if we run this race well, there is a reason for running it well, okay? Number one is that we get to be home with our king one fine day. We get to hopefully plant seeds with as many people as we can to show them the truth of our Lord and Savior, right? And the truth of what eternity is all about. I mean, the scales will just fall off the eyes of people. Uh, we, we have the, the latter rain that's getting ready to come forth. It's going to spring forth like water from a rock in the desert, okay? We're going to have this latter rain that is so unbelievable that we will be speaking in tongues, that he will give us new thoughts and new hearts and new minds in Christ. We're going to be able to, you know, through the power of God Almighty, say, get up and walk, not us, but Christ in us, the power of Jesus Christ. And so I say, stand in that. Stand in the truth of his word. His word is true. From Genesis to Revelation, it is true. And it is all being fulfilled. Don't be afraid. Don't cower. Don't bow down to the enemy or the system. You know, the Holy Spirit dwells in each person who has repented and asked for the Lord Jesus Christ to be their savior. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. It's not some outside and, you know, 4,000 miles away type thing. He is in us, in you. So be bold. Profess the good news. Have zeal. Have courage. Pray for strengthening. Pray for the Lord to strengthen our brothers and sisters in these final hours. Do you see We've got to pray for each other. Stop bickering one with another. You know, I understand that not all of us are going to be best buds. That's just the truth of the matter, okay? 
Oil and water don't always mix. In fact, they never mix, right? That's okay. But they're still in a vehicle, you know? They still make the car run just with the body. If you are a sold out, born again, follower of Jesus Christ, and your brother or sister are a sold out, born again, follower and lover of Jesus Christ, and you're obedient to the Lord's commandments, and you're striving to be diligent and you're searching for truth in all things, then praise the Lord for it. Pray for each other. Pray one for another, especially as you see the day approaching. Do we not see it approaching? This world has nothing for us. For those of you who are truly born again, this world has zero for you. There is no church. There is no assembly. There is no congregation. There is no school. There is no academia. There is no teacher. There is no scholar. There is no parent. There is no child. There is nothing in this world that can take the place of our Father, of the Holy Spirit in you, and of Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord. That is it. We don't strive for the things of this life. We don't strive and seek after the flesh and pleasing the flesh. You don't need to go on a cruise to Jamaica. Maybe you want to. Great, I understand. We're carnal, right? We're human. But you don't need to. You don't need to go over to Hawaii or wherever these places are that are so alluring that have been your dream vacation spot. Well, hallelujah, that time's over. We're done. It's done. I'm just going to come out and call it like it is. It's over. Playtime is over. La La Land and Fantasy Land, done. Right? Living carnally minded is over. If you live carnally minded today, you will end up succumbing to the mark of the beast. You will end up bowing a knee to Baal. Why? Because you still are in love with the things of this world. You can't serve two masters. You serve either God or mammon. You cannot serve both. It is an impossibility, okay? Not a possibility, no, it is impossible. So who are you gonna serve today? God or mammon? The world or the world to come? Which one? Do you wanna be known for your accolades here on earth and all your great achievements and your trophies and your treasure trove of you know, gold stars? Or do you wanna be known in his kingdom as a soul winner, as a zeal, right, zealous believer of Jesus Christ, of someone who teaches the gospel to all you meet because you have such a love? That's the love I'm talking about. It's a love that no man should perish. And sometimes in order to speak those truths, it means that we risk our own lives. Do you see? That's why God says, Christ tells us, no man, unless he is willing to lay down his life, right? Pick up his cross and follow me. And if he's not willing to leave family, or child, or mom, or dad, or brother, or sister, and everyone and everything behind to pursue him. They're not worthy of him. This is the day that we, I mean, you've got to decide. We've all got to decide. And we have to stand in that until that final glorious and terrible day. Either Jesus is coming back in the clouds, or he calls you home, whichever is first. Oh, all I want to say is, it's time to get really real. It's time to reprioritize. It's time to restructure your family. It's time to restructure what's important. Because I'm telling you right now, graduations aren't going to happen, you guys. Okay? The, the, the American dream of 2.5 kids and a white picket fence and the you know dog in the backyard and all that stuff, it will not happen. I am a, I guess I'm a dream breaker right now, a bubble buster, whatever you want to call me, that's fine. I just call it truth. And truth is not always easy to digest. In fact, truth makes people hate you. And I'm okay with that. Hate me. I'm going to speak truth. You're not going to muzzle me. You're not going to silence me. You're not going to tell me to shut up because even if they were to shut me down on this platform, that's okay. I have a mouth and I have a, a house on a hill. And you know what? You can't cover the light that's in us. That's what I'm saying, brothers and sisters. Right now, 
We need to be shouting it from the rooftops. We need to be going out in every chance you get, profess the name of Jesus Christ. Because on that day, when they stand before our God and King, they will give an account. And your words, you're, you're going to give an account. I'm going to give an account, right? Did you profess my name? Did you share your testimony? Because we're told by Christ that it's by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony and loving our life not unto the death that we overcome. Are you going to be that person? I mean, come on. We need warriors. This is a time for warriors to rise up. This is a time for the zealous to be zealous for Christ. It's a time to consider the cost and go all in. All in, no holds bars. Because the day is fast approaching. Time's running out. Time as we know it is running out. So what are you going to do? You're going to waste some more time? You're going to waste some more days? You're going to waste some more hours sitting on Netflix or whatever it is that you're watching at home? What are you going to do? Who are you going to serve? I am, I am super passionate about what I'm sharing with you tonight because it pains my heart. It really does. And I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that we all reach a place where, you know, it's the, it's the truth within us that just starts to bubble up so strong that we cannot contain it. It's like a, a pot boiling over. You know, eventually it scooches that lid right off the top of it. And that's how I feel. There is a, an urgency. There is a seriousness to the hour. And there is just a fire in my belly like, Shout it out. It's time to stand and to fight. You know, fight with all you have. Fight with the truth. Fight with God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob on your side. Don't cower. Don't be quiet. Don't grow weary. I know I talked about this in the last video. Don't grow weary of running this race. It is set out before each and every one of us. Satan is coming against us all harder and harder in will until that final day. It's not gonna let up, you guys, okay? It's going to get harder, right? By design, it's a wearing down of the saints. Pray for strength. Pray for all of us who are in the brotherhood and sisterhood of Jesus Christ. Pray for strength for each other. Pray for an increased faith of each other. You know, we've got to do all we can in these final days, in these final hours, in these final moments, to shine, shine before men. You know, I, I truly believe that this uh, injectionable is taking away that, that gene within people that helps them to increase their faith. I really do. I think that there is a... Uh, there's a major change that occurs in the body when people make this decision. And it may not be evidentiary immediately, and maybe only one in three right now who receives it is uh, scheduled for that kind of demise. But I do know that it is changing people. It's doing something inside that is inhuman, that's unnatural, that's damaging, that's dangerous, that is damnable. So I just ask for you guys to stand up, like I said, speak truth, don't be afraid, don't cower, and refocus your priorities, as I will continually do as well. I love you all, and I will talk to you soon.